I'm, it's odd. It's a it's a very odd day today. When coming in here on a Wednesday. Yeah, my uh, my air conditioning was not set appropriately, so I had to crank it down about forty five minutes ago. Otherwise, it would have been like a sauna up here. Yeah, we got we got hot the other night. I mean, it's like kind of kind of sprang on us, didn't it? The, the it heat, sprang. The uh-huh. heating, the heating up. I get it. It's the sprang. heating up of the homes. No, I yeah. mean we've been we've been in spring for several weeks now, but yeah. Did you guys wake up to the hail last night or this morning? I guess. Yeah, it was. Uh, it yeah, we was, had uh, probably what dime. I heard it. I don't know. I didn't go outside to look at it. I, I heard it. it. It's very loud when it comes. The sound travels down the fireplace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just so sound, loud. Ding, 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 ding. It sounds like, like softballs hitting Lord. your roof. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about a bunch of claims coming in, but it lasted about an hour. They said in central Texas yesterday, they had grapefruit-sized hail. Yes. Wow. I saw, I saw a picture of it. And it's so odd because, you know, you expect it to be one solid ball, uh, but that's not the way it works, right? The hail goes <laughs> up and then it adds to it. So you, it looks like this, like, you know, it looks like this mash of little, little tiny, little tiny ones stuffed right. together, you know, right? That's right. what it looks like when it's that big. It's not like a bourbon cube sphere. <laughs> right. Nice yeah, and smooth. Perfect. Yeah. So it's just basically <laughs> a bunch of hail that, like that in the melded, process that of melded falling, together. Yeah. It, it kind of has a vacuum or it just kind of bonds together. Well, the idea is like there's up updrafts, right? So it, it freezes and then it gets swept up and more water falls on it and it freezes and then it gets swept up again. So the bigger the hail is, however strong the winds at the bottom are keeping it swept up. That's why hail gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And then at some point it gets too heavy for the wind to lift it, so it falls. So that would kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, well, yeah, I remember it, when I, I mean first that, that hand, one right there was bigger than her hand. I yeah, I remember. Can I smack it in your head? I remember when I first moved down here. There was a May Day festival in Fort Worth, and they had it was an outdoor festival. This was in the early nineties, and uh, a lot of people got hurt because. This hailstorm came. Oh wow! And it was like golf ball to baseball size hail is coming yeah. down, hitting people. It hurts. Yeah, and there were people that went to the hospital. So people like scrambling all over the place, just yeah. like running for cover. Yeah, it was like in a park somewhere. So there was you know, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go, and you can't really hide under trees because those things bust through trees, right? God. So what are you gonna do? Now, hide under, through anything. Hide under the little tarp. That's what people were doing. It's like, when they get through so tarps. big, and they... it's like going right through the tarp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily. I remember when I, that was when I first moved down here, and I was like, "Holy shit!" When they get like, well, um, this was my first experience with, with when they become hail. two inches in diameter or bigger, uh, they can they can go through like a three tab shingle, twenty year three tab shingle. They can go they can go wow. right through three inch. Yeah, forget about it. It's going through anything. You know, it's funny. I was uh, I'm, even I'm, the board. Underneath. I was driving through a neighborhood uh, last night coming home and there was this gigantic inflatable thing put around this uh I, i'm Gar- assuming a truck i couldn't see what I it was i almost got one of those it, it, it's hilarious it looks like a, a jumpy house yep a big uh silver jumpy house uh, and it's it's a hail protector i almost got one because my truck doesn't go it doesn't fit in the garage for one thing so is it like hundreds of dollars or how, how expensive uh, is that thing? i looked at them and it was a couple hundred bucks yeah i was thinking it'd but be like three is, to five hundred or... yeah you have to go out there and set it up and, and everything and then you have like a little blower underneath it yeah like like a jumpy house yeah That's i don't so... think it's a constant blow but uh, i can't remember it was a couple years ago i looked at it i was like i was like when i started when i got the truck i was like this will never get in my garage, and we get yeah, it's bad hail. Basically, uh, it's that's a, exactly what it was. It's a right cocoon there. that instantly yeah. boom, pops up. It and looks like a gigantic silver centipede. It looks absolutely ridiculous. Not a centipede. A uh, every, right? everyone's car is going to be you. destroyed except his. <laughs> right. And everyone's going to be like, "Damn, I should have gotten that." What the hell, man? What the what hell? What the hell, man? <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just a matter of. Uh, it looks so goofy, though. I know well, it doesn't matter. That's not. It the, does. The, that's not the well, point. Well, look at this guy. He's putting boxes on his car. <laughs> Cardboard boxes. <laughs> that's great. You know. Yeah, so yeah, I thought about getting that. There he is, right there. God, it's like it's like when you hear about hailstorms that hit dealerships. Yeah. And they have and they have a hail sale. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and then those things are just peppered, destroyed. They and then you know what, what the hell though? I mean, I guess if you don't care what your car looks like, and you get how much you get off? Like like ten grand. Uh, I wonder how much they discount those cars because they're pretty much totaled. Yeah, but yeah, you know, hail could total your car. Yeah, it can. But you know, 
Well, look, they've got all kinds of cool little uh, blow ups. Yeah. Yeah, we're, they, we're looking at, at they've woven <laughs> pool noodles together. <laughs> pool noodles. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, they're, they're, people are coming up with clever ideas to try to stop. Yeah, that doesn't help the sides. No, it kind of doesn't. No. Yeah, pick Although your battles. He has like air mattresses on his. <laughs> he does. That'd be more effective than the pool noodles. Pool noodles. Oh pool my god, noodles. that is hilarious. <laughs> well, you know what? There's uh the. I, I knew a guy that um, in Denton, Texas, that um, he invented. Uh, he he was an inventor. He came up with all kinds of ideas. He came up with a, a blow up seat for uh, stadiums. You know, in fact, I I owned one. He he came up. He bought. He made like uh, fifty prototypes. Was that your orange vagina? No, that was not the orange vagina. Uh, orange vagina was one of those sacks that you kind of like disappear whisk. into. <clears throat> you 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 kind of open it up and you, just you, kind of sink you give in. it a good yeah, swing, you sink in. and it fills it's up. Got this... these big lips that just encompass you. Well, Labia. I mean, but it does. But the shape of it is so phallic. <laughs> you know, it's... it was so gross. But you but know, we, what? it was it, comfortable as hell, it, and you know, it was because everybody wanted to sit in it. Yep. Well, it, don't we, lie. We were making fun of it because we were at, you, we were an out we had a concert till we were at an outdoor concert until he said he, so he de- he debuts the orange vagina yeah he, that comes out and, and he looms up and first. we're making we're making fun of him so much that by the time we we all got all toasty it was like we were deliberately jumping into it to like you know do some muff diving of some sort I don't know what we were doing no but you no. pulled grass up and like sprinkled on it yeah he he, <laughs> he like, says that yeah. but, cubes but once you get into it you're kind of like. I'm not gonna lie; it was comfy. Yeah, yeah. this this really comfortable. But you couldn't get around the fact that you were, you know, in laying a big in orange a, vagina. Yeah, but labia, it was it was like a, a huge labia donut. Lounger. Imagine a huge donut that, you know, a labia d- lounger. Yeah, d- <laughs> well, I don't care. I want to brand that labia lounger? <laughs> hey, you guys can talk <laughs> shit all you want. It, it was it was very comfortable. I was the most comfortable person there for two thirds of the concert. It was, and a, then you guys commandeered it. It was a very. I did not. I think the ladies did. It was a very yeah. fun. Experience. Were you there? You were there. Were you there? That was Boston. Yeah, that was. A, I we think that was a, one of your first experiences hanging out with us, right? <laughs> we yeah. had a ton of fun with that one. That was for sure. Oh, that was one of the first ones. Yeah, that was the first time I met Shelley. Okay. Um, how long ago was that? Three, that was a while ago. ago. Yeah, a was, was ago. Tara there too? Tara was there. Was uh, it summer of 2018? I don't remember. I'd be they curious came. if it when that was. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it feels like it. We ate at some restaurant on the way down there. A Mexican restaurant? No, it was not. It was. Did oh, Julie I, didn't go? I no. vaguely remember that. Because you guys had an extra ticket. Oh went. yes, that's what happened. Yes, yes, I remember now. We were like, ah, I guess we'll invite him. Yeah. I, I made, do remember that. I made the bottom tier. Yeah, <laughs> barely squeaked in. Yeah. All right. Anyway, mm. so here we are. We're in mid, uh, mid-April. mid Oh, my God. Hold on. Oh. Uh-oh. I drank too much of that. Oh. And we are, uh, we're, we're, we're testing a, a, a tasty one here. We're imbibing. Yeah, in the... okay. So I, I had to... Go out of town, which I frequently do. And when I say go out of town, I mean they're, it's they're usually day trips. You know, a couple hours one direction, a couple hours back. So in, uh, I end up traveling. I don't even remember Bridgeport. Uh, yeah, perhaps. And um, I I I enjoy. Was it Bridge, Bridgeport? Where you well, Bridgeport's out that way. Right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it was, but whenever, I think this they're in Bridgeport, aren't they? Um. I don't remember. I didn't retain that. But the uh, when I travel, I really enjoy hitting the those downtown, or especially Decatur. in Texas. Maybe it's Decatur. Uh, it, whatever. So uh, every small town, I always, never on the way to the job, but always on the way back. I, I really enjoy hitting any little town. Sometimes I'll go out of my way to make sure I hit a little town. If it's an extra 10 minutes, I don't care. Like Two. Marfa, uh, sure. Have they, you ever been to Marfa? They've got the uh, they got to... towns in Texas that trip me out. They got they got Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Paris. Uh, Paris. They, they got Paris, Mexia. Uh, they have hell. Yeah, they've got, <laughs> they've got all kinds of things. So my point is, is I I was driving hell? through. I thought there downtown, was a hell, Texas. Um, there? There's a dish network. Uh, Bridgeport, I believe, and uh, Oak and Eden pops out of the corner on the. Uh, uh, down in the corner, I was kind of like, Oak and Eden? I damn near got in an accident fucking trying to stop. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this is going to, I'm going to lose so many man points, but I got to come clean. Part of the reason why I hit all these little towns mm-hmm. is because of uh, Austin. Okay, that's mostly another, another town. Yeah, no, no. So it's it's not, in for my kids too. 
I, I play Pokemon and Yeah, uh, your man points I, are going way down. I uh I go to these other towns and I, I try I go because every cards. small town has like a little area where they've got these little what well, I don't know what they're know what they're called, towers, gyms or whatever. And you can find unique and rare Pokemon to that region. Okay. And you know, it's just part of the game. I, I try to compete with the kids, and uh, anyways, so that's well, part I'm of it. I'm curious about why they're unique to small towns. They're why not would... unique to small towns. They're unique to regions. Okay. So Decatur has their own monster. Uh, ish. You know, it, it's kind of like what is rare in Frisco may not be rare there. Hmm. It be commonplace there. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of like bourbons, I guess. A little yeah, bit. sort of. So but, there's an allocation. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and it, it's kind of cool. So uh, it's in, in what it does do is it it takes me off the beaten path, and it allows me to see a lot of things I normally wouldn't see. Right, right. And but, I but, think it's kind of cool from that perspective. But you always sample the local bar. I, I well, or or just a, a Pub, restaurant tavern. I, well, I. I Typically like to go to bathhouse saloon. <laughs> bathhouse. I like to go. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> I like that one. Rose's rub down. <laughs> well, All right. <laughs> <laughs> like so uh, I I'd like to go to the the hole in the wall um, uh, burger joints in some of these small towns. Sure. And I'm just I just ask, hey, look, I don't want any mains. When I go talk to these people that I'm going to have the appointment with, I'm like, ah. I'm looking to go have lunch. I don't want a, a mainstream restaurant. Uh, what's a solid restaurant downtown? That's that's not a food chain. Right. That's uh, that's no, local owned. I can respect that. That's and, good. and that's what I enjoyed doing that so much. And that that was one of the things I I saw was down in the I think wherever I was at Bridgeport and Oak and Eden was there. Uh, so I walk into Oak and Eden and um, it's all very uh, uh, rustic. Rustic is a word. I'm thinking uh, just a very eclectic. It's a lot of metal, a lot of hardwoods, uh, a lot of like uh, oak. Yeah, like t- just different trees, different species of trees. Like the bar top was like two and a half inches thick of this one tree, and it was just the length of the bar. Yeah. So it was like it a was, saloon. Um, it was a lot of metal. I'm trying to think of the God bless him word, but it's like uh, a, it's like a uh, tasting room. Is what it is, right? Uh, well, they did have a tasting room, wrought um, iron, wrought iron and wood. They had a lot of a lot of iron, a metal, you know, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of wood. So it was very rustic, and it was just cool. It was a, a man's man's place, right? Right. And so uh, I walk in there, and there's this big dude. He's like, he's six foot eight. He's a huge dude, and uh, he's very nice. And uh, I tell him, hey, look. Uh, I'm from out of town, and I'm just—I just saw it. I got to stop and see what's going on. Uh, I'm with a group of friends. We we really enjoy drinking bourbons, and we have several of the Oak and Eden bottles. So I'm gonna come in and see what you guys got going on. And so he invites me in, and they've got several different areas of the place. It's not a huge place. Uh, he says I'm not allowed to go in the back, and the back was like <clears throat> pristine, you know, stainless steel vats. Is that um, where they like? That's, mix. that's where they they do their their brewing and well, they uh, don't distill there. Uh, well, they have vats, so well, they're, they're doing starting, something there. Well, they, what I what I've heard is they're starting to distill. Obviously, it takes a while to make bourbon, right? Well, they're doing other things there. I think and they're doing is, vodkas and stuff. That's, yeah, that's what a lot how a lot of places do because you have to age this. I think this. I don't know if this is MGP, but they buy their it is liquid. Is it? Yeah, it the, it is in because I asked him that specifically, and uh, he was actually impressed that I even knew that. I was going right. to say that. You He's know. like, whoa. We're like, is this MGP? Yeah. Well, you know, I was just like, you just know, like you that. guys get your stuff MGP. But what was really cool about it is they do have a, a tasting area. So it basically they have three sections of the of the. They have a bar um, with a bunch of seating, and they have a, an area which is uh, it kind of looks like a pharmacy, uh, where you have a bar top countertop, and there's no not real seats there. So you walk up to it and. The pharmacy, uh, you would have all these elements, you know, these little drawers you'd pull out, and you you want to try some licorice, you want to try some mint, so uh, some oak, or something like that. <clears throat> so it's make your own bourbon, and make they're kind of like bottle? make your own bottle, and you can go there and you you pay for the 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 basic MGP bottle, and you put your flavors in there. They throw a spire, 
they cork it, they wrap it, wait it's six cool. weeks. Yeah, it's very cool. Interesting. I've never heard of that before. So if you want yeah. a licorice flavored, so they've got cherry, bourbon. they've got flowers. Um, well, that's how was, a lot of the the uh, flavored whiskeys are, right? They just drop, right? yeah, just random shit in there. there right? And they have, um, you know, and they've got some recipes uh, that you can follow. And right. they just say, hey, man, look, you try these, pop them in there. You have a limit of five and just, you know, wait six weeks, chug away, have fun at it. And It's like it, a men's build a bourbon. Yeah. Build a bear. <laughs> yeah. Build a bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. So Oak Eden, it was in uh, Bridgeport. And um, I wish I had, I had more information about that guy. I should have wrote down. Uh, his name to go see him down there, but the particular bourbon I walked away with uh, was we we particularly your dudes like us. I'm Sean. I'm Paul. And I'm Joe. Like are like the four grain bourbons. Yes. You know, I'm, we're enjoying the four grains. We're the, kind of we're kind of moving. Yeah, it's just uh, never stopping. Right. It's always evolving. Because it, it was a wheat bourbon. Actually, it was black powder at first, which I'm sure is just rot gut to us now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was our. <laughs> it, it, you know gut. what? Back then, it was it was, was rot gut too. But that was a gateway. It was definitely a gateway. We were trying to get away from uh, spending, uh, saving. I think two dollars on a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> I think it's what it right. pulled down right. to. And right. then I think we were like, yeah. Well, I think they stopped selling it. It's what it was. I don't know. They don't have it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, well, you're I mean, right. Was it's it's never. We drank the it was shit a, out it of was it. a mixer. Yeah, it was a mixer. Yeah, it was like right. It was like your Williamsburg, you know, or your back uh, or Kings or, Creek or whatever. We didn't even think that was a mixer. We we thought that was a sipper, and it was worse than a mixer. Wow, oh, it, it turned out to be paint remover. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, why don't you talk about the actual bourbon that you ended up getting? <laughs> like for you, it was a personality remover. All right, so this one they have a Can they have several ever. boxes there, and um, on the wall, and they've they've got people. That um that Ogan Eden sponsor. I don't know uh, what this one particular one's called. John Paul White. I don't know who he is. He's evidently. I, I thought he was on the show um, Yellowstone, Yellowstone. No, uh, that, but I was wrong. That's the Forey Smith one, I think. So they have. Uh, so evidently, they've got uh, some superstars that have endorsed their personal uh, preference of uh, Oak and Eden. So they've come in and made their own. I don't know if this Although is. Although that's just, that you could, we have the regular four grain out there, but this one's amped up a little bit. This one's amped up. It's, uh, it, it is, it's 116 proof. So the normal bottle that you get <clears throat> is probably, you know, 100 proof. Bottle and bond, 90, sort of I think it's 90. 90. It's not 90. as strong as this. Right. So this one's amped up. It's a. It's got a regular char. It's American oak, four grain. Uh, there's no fu- infusion. Uh, it's just fifty eight percent booze, man. It, and it's it is solid. It's got a very chunky, meaty, whole wheat taste to it. It's very spicy. Yeah. Um, I think there's some sweetness on it too. I have sweet. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. So just like the build a bourbon, that's what they're doing with like some particular representatives that they want to partner with to, to make their own flavor, right? That's what we're talking about. So they start with the same base Oak and Eden for all of these. I think so, yeah. Well, you know, maybe not. It's a four-grain bourbon, right? So there, it's more than just him throwing in whatever ingredients he wants. Well, they also have a rye. Uh, oh, they, yeah. They have a wheat mm. as well. We have the wheat inspire, right? There's a, a myriad the of combinations. Right. Interesting. Yeah, they have a weeded bourbon that we, we've gotten. Well, I think we have another one out there. We have like two or three of these out there. So when it says no infusion, what does that mean? That means no licorice or cherry or extra oh, flavor. okay. No, okay. So it said right. it was not infused. Well, there says no infusion on there. Okay, all right. Well, so that does mean I thought it the was... infusion was the spire, but I guess not. That's, uh, that's, that's, no, that's... no. Infusion is like me adding uh, cherries to my yeah. barrel. That's infusion. Right, so all they're doing here is so this is a mash bill, so he came up with the mash bill. They partnered with him, right, to come up with his own little <coughs> mash bill, and then they yeah, they stuck the spire in there, right. So yeah, that's, that's cool. So it's it's hot. It's 114 proof, but um, but it, it's it's got a spice to it for sure. So, but you, a nice a nice rich rich you, flavor, uh, right? So you have a medical procedure tomorrow, so you are. Not drinking. You're sampling. You you took. A I few just sampled it. Sips, yeah, but I'm taking it easy but, tonight. Yeah, uh, and and I think um I think that may be why it, you took a sip and it just automatically went straight to your balls. 
Uh, because well, that's, what he's get, that's what he's getting worked on tomorrow. He's getting his balls drained. I'm that's getting them uh, reduced because they're just too big. They're all in the way. Well, that's what happens when you don't use them. Uh, really, they enlarge when you they, don't they, use they them. They fill up. They fill up. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure it works that yeah, way. All right. No, no. I am getting some knee work done. That's all. I'm oh. Tr- I am trying to like head off my knee problems before I'm too old to do anything else other than a replacement. So, so what are we'll they going to do? It's kind are of they going to inject something in your knee? Yeah, I mean the and I wish I I didn't prep for this one, but uh, yeah. So the idea is you they take platelets, they they draw blood, uh, they 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 uh, centrifuge it, and they take platelets, and they separate the platelets and hopefully white blood cells. There's different ways they do it, but anyway, and then they take that and they inject it into your knees, and so what that does is causes your body to uh, like in a, in an emergency mode. Rush to that that place to uh, fight inflammation, to heal, you know, to battle and fight inflammation, right? Because it's, it's right now it's not doing anything, right? So the, it's like a vaccine. The body. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. <laughs> no, it's not a vaccine. So, so anyway, the, and then what, the other the, thing is the, stem cells. But the end game yeah, is stem cells is yeah. to but but before the <clears throat> before that you know, that happens, what happened to you is you worn them down. So there's a right. there's a fiber that protects your knee there's a sack when it's when it's run when you're when your knee's moving yeah, there's yeah. a film in there well it's kind of like a, a disc <clears throat> in between your vertebrae right yeah there, there is a pad that you know that kind of is a shock shock absorber between, and you've worn your pad out well i mean it's not it's not and active. injecting that that plasma right in there it, it, you think Quite it's going to rejuvenate yeah. the, the that's the pad well, that's do they, the do they shoot it into the pad or just like in your knee Sack region. I, to be honest, I'm not a hundred percent sure. They just kind of jab it in there somewhere. Well, maybe like they can do shot? the same thing maybe. they did for protecting these cars. Maybe they can like use some pool noodles or something and and just kind of squirt that in there. I mean, that's, I think that's what the idea is. Well, no, the idea is not to create some sort of artificial, uh, you know, fluid, you know, to to replace a pad. It is. To encourage your body to rebuild it, and it's all your juice. Oh. Yes, it's my platelets. Now, right, stem so, cells, I don't think are mine because they would have to like take yeah. that out of my hip bone, and I don't. Well, think they're that's why I asked. I was like, did they like spinal tap you or something? Well, no. they they could take the stem cells from your circumcision. Have you, did you save yours? My circumcision. Also, oh, your your yeah. your fallopian When they removed tube. my foreskin, and it was huge, right? So it's, my <laughs> foreskin was so big that they you, could you, save you like, were like ten par- years worth of stem cells. You were like, dude, man, you could parasail with that foreskin. I mean, <laughs> it's like when you urine; it takes like a few minutes for it to work uh, its way out. Right? Yeah, it, it takes a while. God. Yeah, but I could just store my urine here. Just Why well, do the, the plate the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the T cells or the stem cells they get from the uh, umbilical cords? They do. And so, then the and the more much more controversial one is is can be harvested from aborted babies. Aborted babies, Correct. and that and so my wife's like, "Well, do you know where they're getting their stem cells?" And I'm like, uh, "I'm not sure. I want to ask the question. I don't want the answer." No, to. that the reason why that that's right? the reason why uh, family planning is is uh, so gung ho on yeah. on on aborting these babies. Well, they, they go in these it. neighborhoods and they're kind of like, and "Hey, man, oh man, look, there's a research out there. There's some dark shit going on there. We'll never know about." Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Planned Parenthood was started by a, a racist. Yeah, to thin the black population. What's right. your goal? Population control. Well, that doesn't no, really. No, it was fit more than the, that. It was uh, uh, more than just population control. It was black population. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah the black population. And, and, and there's a word for that. Uh, don't not genocide, but there's a ah, there's a word for that. But know. she very much was whatever that word is. Yeah, right. I forget what it's called. Anyway, but you don't hear about that much. Anymore. Oh no! Oh no! Who was that person? Well, put in put in founder of uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh, Planned Parenthood. Yeah, she was she was a, not a very nice person. Her motives were not. Was she the one that bombed the Congress? No, no I, don't, I don't think so. Margaret Sanger. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, white screen. Um. Yeah, we'll have to get back to that as uh, we wait for it to load. Anyway, um, so that's what I'm doing tomorrow. And, and again, the idea is to head off, you know, while I'm still young, if I can have my body kind of repair itself, which is kind of what they're selling to me. You know, I, and I'm, I'm meeting with a little bit of skepticism, but I know at this rate, I mean, my, ni- my knees are shot, right, from, from 30 years of basketball. So I know, I know for sure that at some point, if I do nothing, 
it's I'm it's gonna eventually lead to like knee replacement. Correct. So my thought is, you know, hey, give it a shot. Well, my dad has a knee replacement. He ran marathons as uh, well, all the way up till I guess to his forties, maybe thirty. Wow, huge runner. Yeah. And uh, he had bad knees for an extremely long time, had the arthroscopic surgeries and right. stuff like that. One was worse than the other, and he had one replaced, and, and uh, he said it was it's great. Really? He has no pain. He was walking around with pain all the time in that knee, and it was no longer there. Well, that's great. That's great. Because so, I was trying to do some research on kind of, is this real? And, and, and some, some of the, and you know, you can always find something pro and for, right? right. I mean, pro and con. Anyway, but I did find one that said um, knee replacements are nowhere near as successful as, you know, but they don't tell you how unsuccessful it is. Well, he said it is for about 10 years. Well, that's, yeah, that's great. Never that's had great. a problem. He goes hiking in the mountains. And they, and, and what and they shit. were saying is they just don't have the data. Like, they never follow up three years later with somebody who got a knee replacement and say, are you pain-free? No. Well, you know, my dad was a success. Right. So. Well, that's great. But my point is they just didn't have the data. <clears throat> and, and so... The data wasn't that promising, and if there was even more data, it would be even less promising. I don't know, and I don't know whether to believe that or not because they're obviously trying to sell this instead, right? These, well, of these injections, of course, of course. Yeah. Anyway, but so I was like, you know, I get, get what it. I'm saying is, I mean, if you do ultimately have to have it, is uh, Julie's mom also recently had a knee replacement? Okay, and she's doing great. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't need knee replacements until like another probably ten or fifteen years. I think that's, probably. A, that's a scary thought, though. Yeah, they're gonna cut out my joint and put something else in there. Uh, yeah, so I saw a diagram of what they do. Oh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't sound good. No, and but my, and uh, I know my dad. Uh, like the first week, he's like, "This is the worst decision I've ever made because really? it hurts so bad." Oh no. Yep, and uh, uh, and he was out there by actually my sister went out there and helped him, and uh, but now he's like he's like I'm I'm glad I did it. Right. Oh, so, well, yeah, because if you're pain-free, that's the right. whole point, right? Yeah. He's, but, he's, I mean, who great. wants to walk around in, in, like, constant pain, right? Yeah. Can you scroll down on uh, Mr. Sanger here? Because uh, uh, there, there is a word I'm looking for that has to do with weeding out people that you don't like, other than genocide. Eugenic. Oh, eugenics? Yes, eugenics. I don't even know what that word means exactly, but that's exactly what the word I was looking for. Well, eugenics, isn't that what Hitler did? Eugenics is to breed the uh, the ultimate that's uh, race, right? So they, right. she was trying to weed out what she thought were bad, you know, bad genes in the in Correct. the whatever. Here but we go. That, that the science really... which deals with the means of cultivating and improving the innate good qualities of man. There we go. Yeah, she was trying to weed out bad genes, which I guess included black people. Which wow, yeah. wow. And and she's are, the are founder sure? of Plant Parenthood. Are you sure that's what it was? Uh, yes, pretty sure. I mean, well, I mean, it did say. <clears throat> the Republicans, uh, it says, uh, the renewed interest in Sanger is due to the escalation of attacks on Planned Parenthood by Republicans. Well, of course. I mean, and anti abortion activists in her time. That doesn't make it not true, right? I well, mean, you know, I mean, but I don't want to defend her, man. It, it's just, uh, it, it, look, in, in retrospect, it, I, it, it probably hurt. The black folks more than anything. Oh, but well, there's way more black babies being aborted than any other race. Yeah, yeah. But even today, it's, I yes. mean, it's it's killed. It's killed like forty five million, forty five million black people. Abortion has. But can you imagine if those forty five million black folk were alive today? I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of million overall, right? Yeah, but I'm just. Can you imagine yeah. the the amount of uh, input they would have had in people's lives, right? And the, you know the whole. Structure of today could be different. Yeah, yeah. They, they snuffed you know, out. They snuffed out all sorts of influence and and everything. You know, there, right. there's so many opportunities that have been missed, and you know, we 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 probably wouldn't even have Black Lives Matter or any of this other crap well, going on. Well, another big because they'd be stand up. Well, another big contributing factor to this was the Equal Rights Act or whatever it was called, right? With LBJ, right? When he passed. I can't remember the name of it. Equal. Right, I know what you equality, mean. whatever it was, and basically that that that's when the black family broke apart, mm. where the fathers weren't I mean, really. What would cause that though? What what? Well, was the because for that? well because LBJ that his program incentivized single motherhood and having more more kids because the government will give you more money the more kids you have. Mm. 
So in, in an attempt to solve a problem, they made it worse. Made it worse. Because if you look at how what the percentage of black families that had a father pre that, it was like, I don't know, I'm making this you, number You're talking up. about the Civil Rights Act? The Civil Rights Act. The, the um, wow. was like 20-something percent, let's say. Okay. Now it's in the 70s. Of, of, of black fatherless. families without a family. Right. Or I'm, I'm sorry, without a father. Yeah. It's dramatic. It's dramatic. And that, that leads to the culture that uh, is out there right now. Yeah. I, and it's really hard to understand. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why. It's, it's going to take it's a few so generations to, to, I'm going to say weed this out, but it, to, to course correct, uh, you know. Well, it's going to be hard. You know, we're here in the suburbs, right, where yeah, we don't, you see black families and you see mothers and fathers. You go into the inner cities, you don't see that. No, at all. You've got, and if you do, both mom and dad are working some, you know, two, three jobs that they still don't see them, and you got your brothers and sisters so, raising each other. So, do you, so you, do you think maybe it's a socioeconomic issue rather than a, a racial issue? In other words, if, if white people, Chinese people, Hispanic people are in the same boat as areas where it's pretty prevalent, where there's not a father? I think it's are, cultural. Are they following the same trend? I also yeah. think it's cultural I, right now. I, I think you're right, Paul. It, it has not, It is cultural, but white folk can fall into that culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, Hispanics, Asians, anyone can fall into that culture. Culture is regional. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with I think skin I remember color plenty, at that time. hearing plenty of stories of, of white, white single moms, Hispanic silver mo- oh, yeah. single moms. Uh, not so much Asian. I, I don't hear a lot of stories about Asian right. single moms, and but I, I'm sure they're out there, of Well, I, I also heard that, uh, you know, they, they keep selling that this is a white uh, supremacist country because the whites are the ones in power and they do the best. In actuality, the Asians make the most money. Right. They go to college more. Right. They hold better jobs, right? right? And their nuclear family is a higher percentage. Right. The families that have a father is higher in Asian families. Right. Okay. And it is in whites and, that and could blacks be a culture and Hispanics. Thing. Right. So the Asian people are more successful. Right. I think because of those things, because you have a, a nuclear family. Right. And one of the things that the BLM is they want to destroy the nuclear family. They do. It's in their tenants. Well, they removed it from oh. the website when they got pointed out. <laughs> well, BLM was just, you know, that was, that's not a real thing. I mean, that. I, what, I, I think it was for a lot of grassroots people, but then, of course, when the 90 million came around and they yeah, went off and bought a $6 million home. No, so and they're trying the, to cover their ass off. Oh, yeah. So Black are. Lives Matter, uh, I mean, for, not forgive me, but correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, we're too gay women that started the Black Lives Matter? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, two, two black they're communists. women. Yeah, and they're, they were communists, and they, they started this movement, and it wasn't really... They're Marxist, I'm sorry. Yes, that's what what it was. And I wish I, I, wish I, 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 really I could totally understand this. the difference between a Marxist and a, and a communist. I think they're very, very similar. There Communism has to be is something based similar. off of Marxism, right? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't you look that up for it? Look up Marxism versus communism. I would love to know the 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 difference between that. I mean, I know in communism, right, every communist state we've ever known of, right, has a massively strong centralized government and everybody's just a minion, right? A uh, number a number. The the main difference between communism and Marxism is the communism is an ideology. It's based on a common ownership, while the absence of social classes, money, and the states well, Marxism is an ideology by Karl Marx. That is a social, political, and fiscal theory that he created. Okay. And it focuses on the struggles between capitalists. So, well, I'm reading this, and they're very similar. They're just kind of yeah, I think there word is a, salading a little bit differently. Yeah, there is a lot of similarity, but there are some major, major differences. What What are those differences? Because really, the Marxism is, you know, that, that comes from Karl Marx. Right. And so, I mean, he was... A communist. I think, it, I think it's the root of. He just has a few extra little extras in there for himself, <laughs> <laughs> like a well-groomed beard. Yeah, maybe the be biggest well- difference. I'm just kind of looking at this table here. I think the biggest difference is it says Marxism is a way to view big toenails. Marxism is a way to view the world, a system of analysis versus communism being a form of government. 
condition of a society, a political movement that be considered as communism. So you know, what I'm so saying? Marxism because you don't a have a, a country that is a Marxist state, but so, you have a communist state. So Marxism, Marxism is a theory that communism is based off. Yes, of. very similar. Yes, yes. Or so philosophy, it's, maybe it's based on a common ownership, while the absence of social classes, money. And the states. Everybody's equal. Nobody owns anything. It's yeah. all it's all owned by the collective. So. Speaking of, did you see what's going on over there in Shanghai? Mm-mm. Oh, the lockdown? 26 million people cannot leave their homes, and they're oh, starving. They're, down. they're starving. Yeah, I heard they are starving. And did you see the footage where some guy took with his phone, and there's people screaming? I, it's Chinese, obviously, but it's so eerie. It's at nighttime, and you can hear the drone overhead dictating them to stay in their homes and people are like moaning and screaming it sounds like they're dying and they're starving to death because they can't leave their homes to get food oh, no. hey, that's that's communism for you man that's 26 a, million people that's a crazy what if they've got like strong central government that like just to, totally what is oppressing the food delivery the program do they deliver food like they doordash they don't have one because no one can be outside except the military well, I mean, the military can have some DoorDash programs. What I'm, what, what I'm thinking, though, is if there's 26 million people <laughs> in some Shanghai, ice, some what if all of them came out and said, screw you, right. how big is the army? Well, I mean, the, the millions will die, but a, a, eventually they'll have their freedom. Yeah. Wow. I mean, if they all rose up, even yes, if they, half of them rose that's up. What, that's what ends up happening. Yeah. It only takes, it, it, I mean, it takes time. I mean, if, if I'm sitting there and yeah, my family is over here dying but it's, and I'm about dead, why it, not... They're Try. never going to stand up because it, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the mentality of the Middle East. They're, they, it's an ideology. Some people they they depend on communism. Yeah, here it is. Let's they, do this. Oh, this is going to be so gross. Uh. <laughs> Well, how do we know they're not watching the China soccer team uh, in the <laughs> World Cup Goal! qualifiers? Goal! World Cup qualifiers, right? Could be. No. Anyway, it, it's a bad situation over there. It's a there. horrible situation. It, it, that, I think they're screaming is just a way to protest. Oh, of course. Of course it is, but it's still eerie. It is. And the fact that they're locked down and they're starving. And they don't do anything about it. No. And if you went outside, I don't know what happens, but... You get you, you get, you get No, you get shot. I mean, they you they disappear you. Yeah, you end up in the mines. Yeah, with the Uyghurs. Yeah, good lord. Or or start you you go to the the Nike factory. No, Austin, he didn't say that. I think uh, I think it's a legitimate <laughs> question because uh, the the whole Disney thing that's going on, right? Right. And I think it's uh, I think Disney is starting to get some hard questions on their affiliation with some of these countries or who are anti-gay. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Like yeah. China, right? Yeah, I know. You know? Right. And, and how can you justify how the treatment of these Uyghurs and other people in China, and you don't say anything, yet over here you're all up in arms because they, super they, woke. they passed a parental right bill. Yeah, how can wokeness be... Uh, Blinded, they turn a blind. Yeah, how how can it be? You know, there's shades like there's different classifications of wokeness. Right. America has this wokeness. China, you're off the hook. What? Iran, you're it, off the hook. It, North it's Korea, like you're this. off the hook. It, it's like the. How does that work? I don't know. It, it's kind of like how black people can use the N word and nobody else can. Is are you sure that's the same analogy? Uh, well, I'm going to use that. I mean, you know, they, they turn everyone turns it. No, but okay. It it's kind of like. Everyone turns a blind eye to it. Right. It's wrong. Yeah. But no, they I... turn a blind eye to it. That was the analogy. Well, well, well my thing is, <laughs> if, if if you're against people uh, being against gay people, right? You can't be selective on who you're going to prosecute. I mean, it's I'm just going to go after the Americans, right? Well, because well, they're easy, right? And they'll eventually bow to me. I can't affect people over in China. That's right. I can't do that. Uh, that, that, that that's an excellent st- point. They're not do, taking do, their do, fight do, to do, something do, that they know do, they can't do, win. Do, do, oh, I just got a news update. Because they will not win. No, did you? Our, our uh, annual HOA meeting. Yes. And I told you there were, uh, uh, it, it was a vote going in. Correct. Yes. Were you reelected? Um, well, two of the three folks um, that were, uh, that were, what is the word? They were. Campaigning. The, no, they were, they were supposed to win. They were predicted to win, and then you had like 
Some this this guy that was a, a Marxist, and he was he was running, and I don't know if it's he or she, I I, I forget exactly, but uh, they didn't they didn't win, so that that third oh, party you're, you're communist crying. party they didn't win, so how did uh, that go? Was it uh, calm? Uh, well, um, was there any protest? Or? He got he got one vote. So um, <laughs> himself himself. The quote says, "Shitstorm left the meeting after." He lost, and you called him a Marxist, but that's not that's not the right word at all. He's a militant, like, eh, he's just an angry person, right? And he's a lawyer. Don't they call so, those Karens? Yeah, but he's a lawyer, so it's like, what's you the know, male, better what, than you? What's the male version of Karen? Can is there is there a male version of Karen? Can uh, I don't think there is. Hmm. All right. Well, that's Paul. weird. I, I asked how how many people have voted for him. Jeff. They're Pauls. They're Jeffs. They're Shans. Let's agree on Sean. All right. Good. All right. They're Shans. <laughs> Sean and Karens. <laughs> bird. Bird so, watcher. Um, Sean. Have you guys ever gone to an HOA annual meeting? Yes. Yes. I was on the board at one point. Yeah, yeah but I mean, how do you, do you do you go every year? No. Oh God, no. Uh, how many times have you gone? Twice. Once when I need to get elected. <laughs> what, why did you want to be on the board? I, I didn't actually really want to be on the board. We found out that the current board that we had was uh, very corrupt, and we were all very angry. They and were giving like contracts to their friends and family, all sorts of stuff. Like, well, no, we well, we uncovered a lot more when we got in there, but we were angry that the dudes just kept going up and up and up and up, and we didn't understand what we were spending the money on. Right, right. So, uh, so landscape. Yeah, well, that Probably, too. Probably, right? That too. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we, we went, and um, and not very many people showed up, but, I mean, the angry people showed up, and they all either quit, they all quit, or they all got voted out somehow, and uh, I, I can't remember. Did they exactly, leave in a huff? I, I can't remember exactly how it went down, but but the lady who was, like, kind of, like, she was our leader, she was like, you know, I'm an, I'll be president. I need you to be this, and, 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 and like, they look at me, and I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And they're like, uh, you'd be uh, secretary, but we're all going to be vice presidents, but you'd be secretary. I was like, okay. <laughs> anyway, and the next we thing I know, to next take thing notes. I know, I'm basically I'm, you took I'm notes. The we need somebody to take notes and speaks yeah. English. Yeah, that's pretty much that was me. So the people that got voted out or quit, did they kind of leave in a huff with their tail between your legs, or? Well, they're lucky they didn't get fired or sued or or they're in jail. I mean, from what I understood, I mean, there was a a guy in the community that was taking on contracts to do all the landscape work, and he was the one that was upcharging his price. Yeah, they they are totally overpaying. Uh, By the way, it's it's going to go up another $1,000 a week. And the interesting thing is we came in and we started doing what's ethical, which is you're supposed to take three bids on everything you do, like things you learn from the corporate world, right? Sure. You three bids, blah 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 blah, and so he wants to. Um, he he. Uh, we said, okay, we'll, we'll we'll take you as one of the bids, right? Fair enough. Yeah, right. You compete with everybody else, and he wanted time to do a special presentation to us, and we said, no, you, you're not allowed to do anything that the others ones can't do as well, right? Because that's the ethical way of doing competitive bidding, right? And um, and so he like shows up with maybe some materials or something. And we're like, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. And then we looked at his price, and it was double or triple everybody else. And we're like, okay, well, no, nope, you you're not going to get that bid. So, right. I mean, and he was, yeah, he was not happy because I mean, it was a cash cow for him. Well, yeah, I mean, he just got a pay cut, big time. You know, and if he, he just he's part of the community, yeah, and he's part of the community. I wonder if he still lives there. Oh, I don't know. I moved. But the thing is, if he would have done it right, he probably could have maintained it. Right. And he could have. I, I think it's a conflict of interest. If anyone that lives in the community, that absolutely, you're, yeah, no. Well, that's, that's the way it was point. in this community for a while. With uh, what's the what's the folks who used to do it? Yeah, yeah. he used to live in my neighborhood, yeah. and and then they kind of took it over, and they shortly moved out of it. There, yeah, there were a couple. I tell you what, HOA uh, management companies, they there could be some crooked stuff going on. I'm not, I'm not saying they're all crooked, uh, I but. Uh, that particular one I was talking about with uh, not giving out any last names. And I'm not saying he did anything crooked. Uh, I'm not at all. Uh, but, you know, there was some some smoke. Some fishiness. You know, and I was kind of like, huh. And, you know, uh, there was one time where there was uh, one of the uh, communities that's behind my house. Um, <clears throat> one of the houses came up for sale. Which, or, is, which is part of my neighborhood. No, no, no. no. That's not. <laughs> that, what, what I'm trying to say is uh, I, I guess they didn't pay. They... God bless it. I can't talk. They didn't pay their dues. Um, they ended up losing their house, 
uh, the HOA absorbed their house for some reason. It went under bankruptcy, and they owed so much money towards so the, the HOA. HOA the HOA absorbed it hmm. because they owed so much money. So the HOA now owns that house. Wow. Well, um, and then all of a sudden owned it. <laughs> they just kind of owned it. Yeah, and I don't know the details about it, and I'm not saying anything was crooked because. But uh, it just it doesn't seem right. Well, you know, it just seems like a conflict of interest, right? And, and that's why you don't kind of do those kind of things. But well, he may have bought it from the uh, HOA. It could have been absolutely legit, and and I'm not insinuating it's not. It's just if you're on the outside looking in, and you're kind of like, huh. Huh. I mean, a, a big part of finding distressed property is what house flippers do. Right. Yeah. They they go and they, because it's public record about who is being foreclosed on. Right. It's public record. You can go to the county courthouse and see here's the hearing. Yeah. Occur. You can go to the Indian appraisal what, district. It's there. Right. And what's interesting is people just let themselves be foreclosed on, and they're like, if you're in that situation, you 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 sell it for whatever you can possibly get for it. Yeah. Right. You can do what and they then call you a take short that sell. money, and then you take that money and you and you like, run. And you can either run or you can pay off part of the loan and work out a deal with the bank. Right. Right. But you can do something. But when you do nothing. You just walk away. You lose everything. You lose everything. You, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And then well, that's, what, that's what house well, flippers do. Can, they look for distressed property. And then they contact those people because I did it for one day. I'll never, ever try to do that again. You try flipping house? Yeah. I've got a video. I, bought, I, spent, all, I spent like 200 bucks on this video <laughs> series. We're talking back in the early 90s, right? Video series on... Are you serious? I'm being dead serious. Oh, that's Lord. where the guys by the pool going, your success may not be like mine, but this is what I did. Even worse, it showed a private jet rising <laughs> above the airplane, <laughs> above the You're clouds. Like, hey, Shelly, this could be us. It, uh, t- totally. It was bad. It was bad. Anyway, so I I was like, you know what? <laughs> and then I sat on it and sat on it, and I said, man, I just spent all this money. I got to at least try it, right? And I did exactly what it said. I said, you know, go to the courthouse, get a list of things, and then what you're supposed to do is show up in person. Knock on their door and go, hi, I'm an investor. You know, I understand that, you know, you're, you know, you're facing foreclosure. Rather than do that, let's, let's work out a deal that makes it better for you. Right. But I didn't have the balls to do that. So I, I made one phone call. How'd that go? Oh, it was, it was awful. I I like lied through my teeth. I was like, you know, my wife and I are moving into the area. I understand that, you know, you, you know, we could help each other out. Because I think you you know you're you know you you have some distressed property and you know we can we can right. And she was like she went from hello how can I help you uh huh uh huh to go to hell. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. She was like <laughs> that's interesting. And she hung up on me and I was like okay that's the end of this. I'm done with. I'm that. just it's just it's not me. I can't step on people right. right. I can't. I can't well, take I don't it. Know. It seems like a good opportunity. And you know what? I don't think it's just stepping on well, somebody at all because I think what you said was right. You are helping them. They you, are going to lose. They are going to lose everything. You know, when they, I, I think they just don't when know I'm, that. When uh, I bought I don't my really house understand up that. here in Frisco, um, I didn't sell the house in Irving as fast as I wanted to. Right. And so we got stuck with the house. We got stuck paying for both oh, yeah. Both houses at the same time. That's so not we, a fun, fun experience. We rented it out. And I think we went through four people and all four were 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 duds. Uh, All four like were paying. duds. Yeah, they um, and what, trashing the house and it was um it was just it was just all four were bad. I don't remember uh, all the details of all of them. One of them moved out and um didn't even tell you they, they had the water shut off. All right, so when she moved out, um, she disconnected the washer and dryer. And it didn't, didn't, turn it off. didn't turn the water off. <laughs> so oh, no. when the city came by and turned the water back on, oh, yum. Yeah. flooded the whole place. Great. Well, actually, that could be a good thing. Well, uh, you yeah. get an insurance claim out of it. So all in all, you know, the, the house was, uh, it was actually a really nice, it was a very cute house. I mean, it was a uh, 13, 14, 1500 square foot. That was your start. Uh, we gutted it. Yeah, we started it. And with my father-in-law helped, uh, helped a lot. And we gutted the place. We converted like a three bedroom into a four bedroom nice. and opened up the, there was like well, a, just to, 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 I'm sorry. What? To get it ready for sale or for, no, for you to, guys to, to live, live in? in. Yeah, oh, I got so you, I got you. we completely uh, gutted it, opened it up. Uh, there was like a really small, narrow living room and a really weird, funky dining room. And we just tore down walls nice. and made it one big-ass room. And I'm sorry, and I was wrong. I said made it f- from three to four. We made it from four bedrooms to three bedrooms. And so All we bigger. Com- 
Yeah, so we knocked down big walls and made just big open areas because the boys slept together and the girls slept together, and then Tara and I had uh, slept together. So it worked at that time. Right. And uh, so, anyways, we we ended up um, uh, renting the place out. We we fucked up three or four times with people coming in and not paying. You know, flooded the house. Got another person <laughs> to come in. What a Meanwhile, we're paying out our ass, paying out our ass. Uh, I'll tell you what, one of my friends uh, helped me out, and he just happened to be in town, and it was Congressman Gonzalez. Mm. You know, and I was just like, oh my God, I just, I, we're just tapped. Our, 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 he wrote me a check for five grand. Well, he's getting a ton from China. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I ah, know he closed that account. Oh, from the yeah. lobbyists. Did he? <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, but I'm just saying, you know, he was. He well, was that's cool. That, that was what a philanthropic thing to do. You know, so he cut. But he bought the house from you. For he $5, did not buy the house for me. <laughs> so we ended up. Uh, I ended up doing what they call a short sale. Yes. So on the house, and a short sale, if you don't know, is basically you just whatever you owe, you sell it at that with zero profit, and that's what we did. You know that way. Quick it, sale. Boom. Yeah, you know th- that way we get rid of the house, and we don't have the uh, we don't have that on our credit. The credit was the biggest thing. Yes. You know, and and we we salvaged the credit. We ended up making now we have impeccable credit. So yeah, that's that's exactly what people who are in foreclosure should do. You yes. sell it. You so, sell it. Yeah, but short sale. Uh, but is that what you're referring to? Is the short sale? I, I I believe so. Because you had mentioned we could both we could help each other out. Is and you had mentioned a different type of sale. I heard it as a short sale. What what are, what are you? Well, saying? I'm just talking about when. You bought it a great deal. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a ridiculous. Whether that's deal. a short sale or so, whatever. you're just saying let's help each other out. The, the, the profit margin is here, or are uh, they they wanting to move? I, no, I'll pay you cash. Like basically, you're underwater. You're about to be foreclosed on. I will give you eighty five thousand dollars in cash. Boom, you walk away. I mean that's that's what these so, that's what house so flippers were, do. So were you able to see how much they owed? Um. Because then you, I don't think so. Because then you would be assuming any extra debt that they had, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you would have to, yeah, you close you close on the house and everything, and you right. buy it. Well, debt on what? Like utilities? Or are they still responsible no, no, no. for whatever is on their loan, yeah. right? You They're have to still pay res- the bank. You're still closing on the home. I mean, you still buy it, you close on it, and you pay off the bank. Well, if you're giving them 85 grand, that's how much you're paying, right? Right. And they're responsible for anything over that 85 grand. Right. Right. So instead of them owing a hundred grand, now they only owe fifteen grand on the house. Yeah, so it it saves them from paying the whole thing, I right. guess. Right. You know, or sometimes the bank, uh, the bank will leverage, and you know they do, they can. It, it, they They'll work with you. Yeah, they do have. Uh, they can work with you. You know, they, I mean, they, they have accounts where they have to just write off stuff. I mean, they yeah. don't want to be stuck with a home that they have to turn around and sell to somebody else. I mean, it's it's money, right? Money and time. Right. So yeah. there are plenty of times when they're just like, and, and short sales do uh, show up on your credit. I mean, those they're not fantastic to have a short right. sale. Interesting, you know. Okay, but it's better it, when you have a short sale. Uh, it's not good. The bank, everyone knows that you went through that experience, but at the same time, they um, that you took care of it. They know you did a short sale to you. You picked the 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 better of the two, right? The lesser of the two evils, yeah. right? Right. Well, I know when Julie and I were looking for our first house, uh, when we first got married, and uh, we looked at a HUD home. Yes. And we tried to get into that program, and we found one that was actually in Julie's parents' neighborhood down there in Plano. And uh, it was a big house, and it was thrashed. I mean, it needed a lot of work. It needed a new roof. It needed a new fence. It needed a new kitchen. And uh, so what? What? how that, at least back, back then, you know, damn near... Oh, it was 25 years ago, um, you put a bid in, right? So you say, for this this house, you submit your bid to the HUD right. department. And we did. We said, well, we could afford this because we're going to have to dump another 50 grand into the house, right. which make, brings it up to, I think we bid 100,000. It says, well, we can go as high as 150 at the time. And uh, so that's 50 grand to repair the roof, get a new kitchen, yeah. and a couple of other things. We don't want to take care of everything, but... The majority of the stuff, right? Right. So, and we we lost it, obviously, but uh, someone else bid, I think, another fifteen grand more than we did. Right. So, I mean, that's the concept. That's exactly the concept of uh, house flipping. Yeah. 
They go in there. Uh, they I see what it's, They see what it, they're posting it for. They look, go in there and look to see how much they would need to put into it. And they... Now, if I could... You know uh, I, mean? I mean, I would house flip for a living. I, I would. Because I have the know-how. Mm -hmm. If uh, If I didn't... If I wasn't burdened with um, podcast, <laughs> no, just a job. Just you know, we're going oh. to a nine to five. If I wasn't burdened with that, and I had an opportunity, and and I had some capital, mm -hmm. shoot, yeah, it takes man. money to make money, though, right? Yeah, if I had some capital where I could buy a house, flip it. Oh my gosh! But not always, not always. So this one guy I was talking to, he he flips homes. He never uses his own money. He never uses his own money. He basically. Gets a loan. Yeah. Because right? you have like and he knows, 30 or 60 days to, he, yep, to do he, something. And, yep. And he has crews. So he has you, contacts. Have, you have to finish the job within five weeks. I think five weeks is the magic number. Right. And Because you have five weeks and then you have three weeks to sell the fucking thing. Right. Right. Because so it takes he, a week to process. Yeah. So he borrows the money to buy the home from whoever has it. Then he's got a line of equity um, to... Put like he might put twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars into it, right? Yeah. To to fix everything, the like you said, roof and and right. fence and kitchen, right? And then puts it on the market. Yeah, walk, so walks away with one hundred and fifteen thousand. The theory, the theory is, is like let's say someone difference. gives you a hundred thousand dollars, and they're like, well, you know, you can buy you can buy that one house, turn around and flip it, you know. But he's like, no, you don't do that because you only need to put twenty thousand dollars down. So. Buy five houses, put twenty thousand dollars on each house, and then flip five houses. Right, and then you have to do it within a certain time frame. I don't know what that time frame is. I want to say I mean, sixty or ninety that's days. That's when you're good at it, and you have a ton of contacts and a bunch Ooh, of teams man. that can kick ass. Yeah, but you, just but you, you can do just one house at a time. If it's just you, could you get yeah. it done in five weeks? Um, do you have the contacts for it? Uh, no, just him. What everything? No, I mean, <laughs> no, man. <laughs> No, I'd, I'd be trumping. I'd be trumping. <laughs> well, I was gonna say you can't carry drywall upstairs like you used to. No, I, I could, but there was probably a time where I probably could uh, get, get pretty to close to it. You would get back to that. Yeah, but uh, you know what though? Uh, it, it it doesn't take long. I I know people, and um, I think I honestly think that's the bigger connection, right? You have to know. You had to know people that can move quick and that are yeah. cheap and fast and good. So, uh, in, in in unless you're gonna do it all yourself, and part of that time for that. Part of that is uh, what well, some of the the key parts of, of flipping a house is is turning the the drywall and the painting and the and you know because carpentry is easy. I mean the the baseboards, the crown molds, slapping doors on, you know that stuff's that stuff's pretty easy. You know electrical. I mean electrical is really easy too. So I mean if it were me, I would and and I was forced to have to do something. Uh, that's probably what I would gravitate to. Just the, the trim work and the electrical and probably the data, running the, the telephone wires. And then you, you can get these guys mm -hmm. that can turn key uh, the drywall and painting, and they'll go in there for a set number, and I'm not shitting you. They'll show up with 30 f fucking people. They'll show up with 30 people. And, and knock it out in two days. They'll be done in a day. Right. Maybe two days. You know they'll start in the morning and they'll the, they'll come in one room and they're like boom it's drywall boom it's taped boom it's floated and they're they're just moving they go across the whole house and it's just a whirlwind yeah, they don't and they're around. just I mean you get, you get that many people you're gonna get shit done and they've got different types of tools too they got like bazooka tape and bedding machines you know where these guys on stilts and you know I mean it's the real deal and it, they're and they're fast yeah. And they're not all Hispanic either. They got lots of black people, lots of white people. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's some African strange people. Strange there. enough, there's a lot of uh, Asians. Asians. Oh, Asians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it Haitian? No, I didn't say Haitians. <laughs> a Cuban or two. Uh, yes, yeah, they, uh, those guys are in the back cooking our food and smoking cigars. <laughs> Really? No, no. Make still the, the flipping. The I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it. Just but then because you have, I, but then you need an aspect of uh, design as well. You so, just can't have an empty house. You have to stage it. So, and, and here's 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 my thought on on the the empty house. Here's my thought on this whole flipping thing too. Because flipping, there's a, there's another. I don't know if we have enough time to talk about all this. So flipping, this is my idea. 
okay, like for example, there are different regions that have like, uh, we'll just talk about Irving, for example. There are certain regions that have like 1,200 to 1,600 square foot houses. And if you want to go hit those houses that are the L-shaped foundations. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's a particular reason for that. The particular reason is because you switch it from an L shape to a rectangle. Oh, you're adding stuff on here. Correct. Because what what are you doing? When you add something on, you're increasing the square footage of the house, which sure. increases the value of the house. Right. So if you have a house that's valued at a hundred thousand dollars at eighty three dollars a square foot, et cetera, et cetera, and you you increase it by eight hundred square foot, well, guess what you just did? Right. Yeah, and and, well, that, and you also move your home into a, a, a whole different class of uh, of market buyers. Absolutely, right. and you can. It, it, what, but but the end game is for these particular type of homes because when I say thirteen hundred to sixteen hundred square foot, those are basically really shitty houses that, uh, you know, really small rooms. But what you do is you are basically adding that extra area. You're adding a master bedroom. Right. A real master bedroom, and you're adding a really classy bathroom in that extra area. Right. So, I mean, I've already, I've already thought about this stuff, right. and because I've always wanted to do it, I just never had the capital to do it. And right. that is the way to do it. I mean, it really is because for you know fifteen hundred bucks, you can get someone out there to pound out the foundation. Yeah. I mean, there's it's a process. But again. I mean, obviously, Knowing dep- the right folks. it depends. It depends on, I guess, your credit rating and, and your relationship with the bank. But you don't use your own money in, in most of these situations. They go to the bank. They get the they get the yeah, money. Yeah, I boom, mean, boom, 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 boom. but it's if you, I mean, and that is a good way to to play. You know, I mean, if you can if you can follow if you can do, get away with it and do it, that's great. I mean, I would prefer just to have the capital to do it because right. you're not you're not. Robin Peter to pay Paul because if that five weeks turns into eight weeks, yeah, because shit happens, right? Right, weather, shit happens. Weather happens. Yeah, weather happens for sure. You know, people. Yeah. You know, you know. There's there's a lot of stuff, and but you know, I enjoy it just simply because I was exposed to it for so much. Yeah, huh? you did a lot of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, well, you know, uh, and I I get the fever for it. Sometimes when I'm uh, doing my current job. You know, yeah. I, I end up on a job site or something like that, and I'm kind of like, oh, oh man. That'd be I fun, can... yeah. And then I start to think about some of the, how how much it kind of sucked, you know. You, right. You become country strong, kind of, sort of speak, you know. Oh, yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I was making fun. I mean, I feel bad now, but <laughs> I was <laughs> making fun of Jeff a little bit, and, you know, because I was like, come on, Jeff. Uh, because he's city weak. Yeah, no, I <laughs> because haven't. I was like, "Hey, man, let's let's let's." I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go swing by the uh, what's it called? I gotta go by somewhere where I gotta move like some drywall from this place to another one. And we brought the boys over there to help me do it right. because it was like I don't know a lot of sheets. I don't know what it was, and I'm picking up heavy as, as shit. Yeah, well, yeah, it was so heavy. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's just. It, but when you're used to picking them up and, yes. and carrying them, it's technique and just moving it forward. And I'm I'm looking at Jeff and he's picking them up and he's he doesn't have technique and my inner monologue's fucking with him even though I'm not saying anything. No, I do. I was. And I was he's like, hearing I'm my struggling. inner monologue even oh, though yeah. I'm not saying anything. I saw the look. I'm just like, <laughs> here we go. He's manning me up. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, in the back of my head, I know that I don't do this every day. There you go. Right. Sean was doing it every day. Now, if we wouldn't do that today. You would both. He know. would know that uh, how you what felt. I was feeling. Yes. Yeah. yeah no. Uh, and it, then I'd stand there and mock both of you. Yeah, you would. <laughs> and uh, we were stupid enough to lift these things. No, oh, well, we would like <laughs> task you with holding the defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> no, now we go. Hey guys, hey boys, the kids, <laughs> right? Go move this for me, right? Yeah, yeah, no way. That's not happening. Yeah. And, and, and you, <laughs> and you lazy yeah, it is. Kidding. I mean, if you lift that shit every day, I mean, you def, your, your core gets stronger, your grip gets stronger, everything. And it's everything. it it's it's more you know, and it's it's climbing up in the attics and being a contortionist. Because uh, when I say climbing up in the attics, I'm not talking about like you know tiptoeing on the joys. I'm talking about like literally crawling you know, through you know on your hands spaces. and knees and not crawling on a flat surface. I'm talking about mm-hmm. from joist to joist. Could we do it now with our bellies, dude? There's, Would it be like a teeter totter? Oh, <laughs> your, so your, your bellies are in the way. Yeah, your belly comes through the ceiling, <laughs> right in between the oh, joints. God, man, <laughs> we really gelatinous. Just kind of spills right. down in there. I tell you what, I've done. I've done enough crawling around in the roof, uh, in the in the attic, to know what you're talking about. On your stomach, crawling to get to the end of the pipe that's leaking or whatever. You know, it's dudes like us, man. And I'm enjoying this shit. I enjoy talking about this. 
you know, this this HOA stuff. I don't I don't know if I've talked about it too much. Um, you know, we can talk we about can, it a little bit more. I think every other every other podcast. Is yeah. it? Are you serious? Is it's it just me? It's a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, you're obsessed with it. Well, it, it's been. <laughs> It's been part of my life. I've been on the fucking board for a decade. He doesn't want to let it go. Yeah. I actually do. And I'm on my last year. I'm finishing (laughs) up my year. That's why you're on your sixth term. No, my last third year, my three year term. My last three year term. It is a term. Yeah, the producer's laughing at me. It's called, it's a term just like it is in government, right? Yeah. You you have a two year term or whatever it is. This is uh, three years and two month term. Right. I wonder if I could be impeached. <laughs> you can, yes, of course. They could, they could probably recall your ass. Absolutely. Huh. I'm amazed you haven't been. I'm a lame duck, so I don't care. I don't show up to any of the meetings. <laughs> you know, lame I'm basically duck, intellectual property. I mean, How do you do this? How do you do that? Yeah, people, call, they, they, you know, they, they're calling me and says, hey, what's going on with this, this, this? And I'm like, oh, God. Okay. Call Tommy to do this. Tell this guy to do that. Call that guy got to do that. Call me at 8 to make sure it's all done. Uh, whatever. I just... So, you know, like people who are on real company board boards, is that a total, is that a total farce? I mean, what the do they boards? really do? They, they, they make, they're on like three different boards. Right. And they, pay, they get paid for that. Well, they're yeah, on they boards. In some cases, they get paid a lot of money for that. For their intellectual, they're, there's, there's a couple things. They're, they're there for intellectual property. And they're also there for status. Not, I mean, the, well, status and... Well, it is. It's, it's status that I'm there for status, but I'm going to join that board and pay money and dues to be next to Paul because of the status. I like Paul. Paul's a popular guy. I want to be on the same board so as you, Paul. So you're saying so board that, members have their own selfish reasons for being on a correct. board. There's, there's but other. then companies also want to, to get to lure high-profile names onto the board so that it gives the investors yes. confidence that it's the company's being led in the I mean, in, in, the, in the, the right board, direction. The board right? the board is really the one who drives when, pushes the CEO and says you need to go in this direction. Well, no, they're supposed when, to be looking out Elon for the shareholders. Right? Musk uh bought into Twitter. I mean, yeah, what do you think's happening now? He declined. Oh, he declined to be on the board. Well, well of course he did decline, but he's well he doesn't matter. He doesn't need to be on the board to have control. Yeah, he's sending out tweets that are you, you know why the he world didn't join? Right Not because he doesn't care. Well, if you're on the board, you have to think of the company first. You can't do anything detrimental to the company, right? Which it, means it, he's not going to be but, able to tweet some of the things he's been tweeting. But That's he true. can. But as a to be a majority stockholder, you you still have you don't have to be on the board to have influence. True. True. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. True. And no, I, he had yeah. tons of influence. And I also so why heard, be on the board? It's like well, well, you know. Well, I also why heard, be president when you could be king? Right. right. I also heard that if you're on the board, <laughs> it limits you to how much, uh, how many shares you can have. Right. He probably right. didn't want to be. And I think it caps out at fourteen or fifteen percent, and then you're done. Whereas if he's just outside, he can buy all of them. Well, did you hear somebody filed a lawsuit against Elon Musk? What for? Because he didn't buy his nine percent all at once. He's been buying stock every day for like throughout March. Right. And into April. And by law, he's supposed to be, he did not disclose that he had like a certain percent until much later, you know, a week or is two later. Is this an later. SEC regulation or law? That's what this lawsuit is claiming that he oh, broke. What are they trying to do? Undo it all? Well, they're just trying to, he, they're trying to sue him for breaking the law. I, I, I don't know. Is I it all these butt hurt Twitter people? But, Probably. No, he's being sued on uh, yesterday by a former Twitter. Inc. Uh, shareholders who claim they missed out on recent run-up in stocks prices because he waited too long to disclose the 9.2 percent stake in this social media. Company. So they're about hurt because they didn't make their money. Make yeah. more money, right? If they had known, in other words, had they known, they would have bought more, right? They would have bought more because it's gone up 27 percent since Elon Musk. 27 uh, percent. So Twitter shares rose 20 percent, 27 percent on April 4th uh, to to almost 50 bucks from 39.31. To uh to forty nine uh, ninety seven. Yeah. After Musk disclosed his uh, his stake, uh, which investors views as a vote of confidence for the world's richest person in San Francisco based Twitter, former shareholders led by Mark Rosala said that the delayed m- disclosure. Le- Anyways, the same shit we just talked about. Right. Anyway, they're upset that they get to make more money. That yeah they yeah. they missed out on on some sort of profit right. Anyway, he was being sued for that. But anyway, I. I but he, is, is he going to get sued? 
Well, he's oh, he's already is sued. Yeah, he's being. Sued. Well, I mean, but what's the in game going to be? It, is he going? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I guess it, he'll it, have to pay them for whatever they. Is there going to be a penalty for whatever possibly. they missed out on salary? Uh, well, how, how would that work? He well, would, yeah, well, well, I, well, I was going to buy a million shares. So was I. That's so funny. Yeah, I, I mean three. Yeah, I was all going. I was oh, going to buy a million shares. Dudes like us, three, <laughs> three million shares. <laughs> it's more um, like the yeah, three I, amigos. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I could afford that much, but anyway. Um, it's going to be so. The other interesting thing about this whole thing is, is Elon Musk has been doing these polls on on Twitter. Right. Do you think that it's okay that they've been censoring free speech? Right. I mean, really inflammatory. That's why he didn't want to be on the board because he couldn't do that. Right. And so anyway, so so conservatives and Republicans are like, he's our last, you know, bastion of hope to hold big tech accountable. Right. Well, we're thinking. Right. Maybe I think this could be a really interesting thing. I, he's just so eccentric, this guy. Uh, I, I loved it when he pulled out. He went on the stage uh, at some uh, pulling out the new car, and he comes out. He's got this big cowboy hat on, and and he's, he's celebrating just, the move to Texas, dude. He is. He's just I don't know, man. He's awesome. It's yeah, funny. he. he, he I, the first thing that I was thinking in my mind was was Tony Stark, right? You know, because he's totally Tony Stark. Is he married still? Uh, no, they got divorced. I don't. Yeah, he's got his kid. What Alpha X or something like that? Uh, I thought it was. Yeah, like some weird sign, like Prince. Yeah, the artist known as. Yeah, he he's very eccentric. I don't know if you could sit down and just have a beer with him and have a really. Well, I mean, Joe Rogan sat down for three hours with him and he well, smoked a doobie with him. Well, maybe he that did. helped. I remember that. Yeah. He smoked a, a, a a joint. A smoked marijuana. No, did Rogan did that or just Elon Musk? Both of them. Oh, did they really? Yeah, Rogan sat down. Were they with based Elon in California? Was in California, so they California do that? time. Yeah, you can't so they... do it now in Texas. No, can't do it in Texas. Not yet. I think it'll get there, but not not yet. Have yeah. you guys ever heard about the Delta Eight? That's another thing. That's Delta Eight. That's marijuana. That's a fake well, marijuana. Some people CBD. try to sell it as it's not because it's different. But then now they start cracking down. Like CBD places were selling yeah. Delta Eight. It's Hump Day. It's dudes like us. I'm Sean. I'm Paul. And I'm Jeff. We'll see you guys in just a few. You say hemp day or hump, hump day? day? Oh. Oh, hemp. Hot CBD. Uh, uh. It's good. <laughs>